Well, here it is, the 2023 Ford Ranger Raptor. It's finally here, and this is the final production model. And we're gonna do some on-road driving, we're gonna do some off-road driving, we're gonna do some high-speed off-road driving as well. Ford tells us that this is the most capable and the fastest Ranger Raptor. Of course, it's got that big twin-turbo, three-liter petrol, six-cylinder under the bonnet. But what I'm interested to find out is how good this car is overall. What's it like on-road? What's the interior like? Is it still capable in the low speed stuff as well. We've got a lot to get through in this review, so let's get stuck into it. The 2023 Ford Ranger Raptor is priced from $85,490 before on-road costs and there is only one fully loaded specification level to choose from. There are eight colors to pick, however, and buyers can option up beadlock capable wheels for $2,000 extra. The locking rings for these wheels are available separately and they cost an extra $1,998. But don't forget, beadlocked wheels are strictly for off-road use only in Australia. Buyers can also choose a $500 decal kit for the Ranger Raptor. All of the important stuff for Ranger Raptor is included in the standard offering. I'm talking about things like 33-inch BF Goodrich KO2 all-terrain tires. These have a light truck construction and three-ply sidewalls, and they're mounted onto a 17-inch alloy wheel. Fox continues to supply specialist off-road dampers for this Raptor. They're internal bypass, and they have a big 2.5-inch diameter but these have been updated with next generation live valve technology and that gives this Raptor a variable adjustable compression rate on the run. This new Ranger Raptor uses Ford's new T6.2 platform underneath. That is developed from the T6, which came in the Ranger back in 2011. But the important thing to note with this Ranger Raptor is that it didn't come as an afterthought after the Ranger had been released. When they started developing the new Ford Ranger, they started doing the Raptor and the Everest at the same time. So this new Ranger Raptor here, as you see it, has been developed and engineered in Australia and tested as well for many years. So really keen to see what it's like in that high speed stuff. The Raptor also gets a stronger chassis, bespoke steering, bigger suspension mounts, a watts linkage rear suspension with coil springs and aluminium control arms up front that suits that 100mm wider wheel track. However, the big news comes from under the bonnet of this new Raptor. Gone is the underpowered 2 litre turbo diesel engine, which left the old Ranger being, embarrassingly, a little bit slower than a standard Ranger. Instead, this new Raptor adopts turbocharged petrol power. There's a 3 litre twin turbo V6 under the bonnet, and that makes 292 kilowatts. That's nearly double the power of the old Ranger and 583 newton meters. This runs through a 10 speed automatic gearbox with selectable all-wheel drive, a low-range transfer case, and locking front and rear differentials. This is the interior of the new Ranger Raptor, and as you would expect, this is kind of an all-you-can-eat version of the Ford Ranger. It's got all the bells and whistles, everything you could want, really. Big 12-inch infotainment display there. That's got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, navigation, a whole bunch of features going on. But I do like to see these dials down below here. You've got a volume dial and air conditioning controls. This is nice to have physical buttons. Even though Ford has such a massive screen here, you've still got nice, easy controls there. Now, down below, you've got a wireless charging pad, a couple of power outlets, and in front of you, you've got the big, 12 inch digital instrument cluster. Now this, this is the only Ford Ranger specification to get that. It's a pretty nice bit of gear. There's a lot of customization and data and detail you can dig into there. Another big ticket item in this Ranger is the seats. These two front seats here, they look pretty great. They've got a whole lot of bolstering obviously because you're gonna be going around sideways on corners and that sort of thing, but they look and feel nice and quality. There's a little bit of a suede effect material going on and some orange finishes as well. And another thing to note here, in comparison to the old Ranger Raptor, Ford has actually done a unique seat for the back seat here. So there's a bit more bolstering as well. It's a little bit more comfortable. And Ford says that that sort of helps the cabin be a little bit more inclusive overall. The old Ranger Raptor just had normal Ranger seats in the back. Now, a couple of other things to point out here. We've got a different uh, suede effect material on the dashboard here. Second glove box, which is really nice to have. A couple of extra cup holders here. Normal cup holders in the middle. 
overall build quality and that sort of thing, it feels really good. You've got these orange effects here, of obviously the 12 o'clock marker on the top of this steering wheel. This is a unique steering wheel for the Raptor as well. This is an expensive four-wheel drive ute at the end of the day. You're looking at $85,000 plus on-road costs, but at least it does feel quite premium in here. Currently on the blacktop in this new Ranger Raptor. Uh, while everyone wants to really know about off-road stuff, how does this jump, how does it slide, what's it like at low speed off-road, on-road is still a very important thing for this car to do. This car is going to be doing a lot of commuting and driving day to day and it's an area where the old Ranger Raptor did excel, especially in comparison to other dual cab utes in the segment. It had a nice, soft, buttery ride quality which you just don't normally get in a dual cab ute and that's all from the suspension. That's an important thing for this new Ranger Raptor to nail and it is very good in that regard. I'm currently just cruising along here doing 70 k's an hour. I'm in just a normal comfort driving mode and this thing is easy, it's comfortable and it does have a nice ride quality going on. The thing to note here, and the big difference with the old Ranger Raptor is in that suspension. This has that live valve Fox suspension that gives this electronic compression damping control. So it's adjustable in that regard. So it can soften things off when it wants to and it can firm things up. And what I've found driving this Raptor is that you've got a wider range of capability now. The old Raptor, really good, fantastic, this does that, but you can also twist this dial down here and you can go into a sport driving mode. You can adjust the dampers by themselves. You can adjust the steering system by itself. This Raptor has a new electrically assisted steering system that is unique to the Raptor only. A Ranger has a different one and that's different to the old Ranger Raptor that just used um, the same as the rest of the range. It's an important thing because the way Ford explained it, when you stick an engine into a Raptor that's got just about double the power, you kind of have to bring everything else up to speed speed so it works as a cohesive unit it doesn't feel sort of overpowered and underdone in other areas the steering works well you've got a bit of variety there and you've also got the exhaust modes to choose from now that's not so much about performance but obviously a bit of different noise you can go from quiet to normal up to sport and then there is also Baja. Baja the noisiest one but that is off-road only so I don't think anyone's gonna actually follow those rules to be honest with you. It's gonna be a lot of Raptors getting around in Baja mode I'm sure but uh, choose your poison there I suppose whatever you want to do but there is a nice quiet mode if you don't want to piss off the neighbors and that sort of thing which is a nice thing to have. When you start to drive this thing a bit more aggressively on the bitumen, tipping it into corners and that sort of thing, when you've got the sport mode selected, this has more capability on road than it ever should have rights to have. It's a big four wheel drive, right? It's two and a half tons. It's got a high ride height, big center of gravity, big all terrain BFG tires. It shouldn't handle that well and like a small hot hatch is going to handle better than this. It's going to be more nimble, responsive. It's going to be more rewarding as well. But holy hell, this thing is not bad at tipping through the corners. It does have a bit of a sense of balance there. The tires hold on reasonably well. And because you've now got a permanent all wheel drive system, an automatic one anyway, this thing handles a lot better than the old one. The old Ranger Raptor was very tail happy, even on some lower friction surfaces. It didn't have to be really wet bitumen, even just slightly damp stuff. It was spinning the back all the time. This one, you can keep it in 4A, and I would recommend that. This thing's got a lot of power at the end of the day, but it does grip up pretty well and get out of the hole nicely without losing too much composure. You can go to two high if you want for just rear wheel drive you're going to lose grip on those rears pretty quickly and fry them up if you want to that's that's up to you i suppose but the thing to take away from this new raptor is that the breadth of capability has gotten wider and i think that's because of the improvements to the chassis this has that new 6.2 t 6.2 platform underneath it it's mostly the same but it's just been updated and tweaked and changed around the place so we've still got a watts link coil sprung live axle at the rear and independent front suspension up front you do have that little bump in the wheelbase 
um, forward, but you don't get the increase in wheel track like Ranger had. Uh, so the old Raptor used to be 150 mil wider. This one is only 100 mil wider than a standard Ranger because the standard Ranger is 50 mil wider now. But this thing feels wide, it feels big, it feels capable, and it feels comfortable. And I'm gonna throw another word starting with C in here, cohesive. It does feel like it does work overall as a package in terms of just a daily driver, something in the grind, something in the commute, but also something that you can drive and just enjoy a little bit as a road car, which does seem kind of strange. Just join this road here, give it a little bit of throttle, not too much. Engine performance between the new and the old Raptor is, it's night and day, it's, it's no comparison at all. Naturally, this is twin turbo petrol. It's a completely different character. There's nearly twice the power available from this powertrain and it works really, really well. It's matched up to a 10 speed automatic gearbox, permanent all wheel drive, as I said before, and it seems to be really nicely tuned and responsive. This three liter twin turbo doesn't feel peaky. It doesn't feel laggy. It doesn't feel like it has some sort of propensity to sit at the top of the rev range or at the bottom. It feels nice and linear across the range and it's responsive and straight line performance is really good. This would go somewhere near halving, I think, the 0 to 100 times of the normal Ranger Raptor, the old Ranger Raptor, I should say. We're not sure exactly what that will do. I haven't got a V-Box with me at the moment. We'll, cover, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I suppose. But performance, if you're worried about this not being quick enough, I would say don't be because it feels quick. And while it is fast, it does have a sense of composure at the same time. It's not wild. It doesn't seem to want to lift wheels or lurch or that sort of thing. It puts the power down with good composure and it gets moving. Then you look at the speedo and go, oh wow, okay, we're actually moving along at a fair clip here. Maybe you need to slow down or um, do whatever you need to do. But through the engine, the gearbox, the powertrain, it all feels really good. Some other things to note here about the car, you've got lane keep assist, you've got lane trace, which is almost like a semi-autonomous driving mode. They're not too obtrusive, which is fantastic. It's not trying to overtake the job of the driver here. They are there, and if you do sort of start to veer away, it'll give you a little nudge just to say, get back in the lane, but it's not trying to overplay its hand, which is really nice. Engine noise is pretty good. Obviously, if you put this thing into the louder exhaust modes, it does get a bit noisier. The stuff that you hear in the cabin here is not true exhaust noise coming out of the exhaust tips. What Ford has done is effectively take that exhaust note and digitize it, and then they pump it through the speakers in here. So it is an artificial form of noise that comes into the cabin. And well, some people don't like fake noise, right? And I absolutely get that. But Ford's argument, I think, is a little bit valid as well. And they said, because this is a ute, you don't have that sort of sound chamber of a wagon to help resonate the sound through the cabin. It was a choice of either do it electronically like they did by digitizing the sound and pumping it through the speakers or have not enough noise at all. So it might've been a case of like a Kia Stinger or something like that where it just sounded a little bit too quiet from the driver's seat. I've been outside this car and I've heard it go past under a bit of load with a fair bit of throttle and it does sound very nice. There's, it's got a unique sound, I think. It doesn't sound like a bad V6. We all know what a bad V6 sounds like. This is different to that. I am actually lucky enough to have driven a Ford F-150 Raptor of a mate of mine's uh, over in the States a little while ago. Um, so in comparison to that, in case you're wondering, this little baby Raptor feels surprisingly similar to that big F-150 Raptor with the 3.5 litre twin turbo engine. This has a smaller 3 litre, but it's a much smaller car overall as well. And it feels, in comparison to that F-150, a little bit more lively, a little bit more aggro. It's got a bit more exhaust noise going on, a little bit more engaging I would, to drive, I would say, as well. Another thing to note there is uh, Ford mentioned that this powertrain is used in the Ford Bronco Raptor, which we're not even getting the Ford Bronco in Australia, let alone the Raptor, which is a little bit of a shame, but they mentioned that the Ford Bronco Raptor is 200 kilos heavier than this Ranger Raptor. So 
In terms of a performance sweet spot, this would actually be it. And if you'd have to choose one for going fastest off-road, this would probably be it as well. So that's a good little thumbs up for the Australian market, I think. We didn't have the opportunity to do a piece to camera whilst driving this Raptor hard off-road, but I'm thankful for that because, to be honest with you, I was putting every bit of my attention and ability in getting the most out of driving this new Raptor. The track we had at our disposal was a bit over two kilometers long, and it included tight and sweeping bends, and was only cut into the paddock by repeated driving and no machinery a few days previously. In comparison to the old Raptor, this new model is a completely different beast. The twin turbocharged 3 litre V6 is potent and responsive and it gives you enough power to whip this thing through corners, sideways, under power, in four wheel drive and that's something the old diesel Raptor wasn't able to do. There's also enough power on tap to rotate this thing through corners with the throttle, once again with four driven wheels and that built-in anti-lag system allows boost levels to stay high after briefly throttling off mid-corner. Suspension performance is as epic as ever. It's now more dialed in and direct feeling, however, and it's still got that amazing ability to soak up rough terrain. Somehow, the harder you beat on this car, the better it feels and the faster it feels as well. Few owners are going to do what we are doing here, which is understandable. It's an expensive ute at the end of the day. But it's also a shame because the absolute bandwidth and performance of this new Raptor is quite impressive to behold and experience firsthand. Well, it's not very often that I have to wear a helmet while reviewing four wheel drives, but today happens to be one of those days. I just spent a few laps on this off road track here, putting this thing through its paces and it's really impressive as an off-road performance vehicle. This is in a different league in comparison to that old Ranger Raptor. No disrespect to that old one, I do really like it as a four-wheel drive, but this one just ups the ante in many respects. It's got nearly double the power, it's responsive, it's eager, it's a bit angry, and this suspension goes up to the next level as well. And it works overall as a very effective, fast and fun off-road vehicle. I got to spend some time with someone behind the wheel who's actually good at driving and he showed me how to drive this thing quickly and by golly you can go very quickly in this thing off-road and it makes for a package that yes it's expensive 85 grand plus on roads that is a fair chunk of change for a four-wheel drive ute but this thing does deliver in many respects aside from all this off-road shenanigans this thing's comfortable it's quite refined there's a lot of technology there's a lot going for this ute and at the end of the day it's going to make a lot of new owners very happy you're a bit tidier than i was <laughs> Did it practice <laughs>